of that weather that we came back to port for. It's, uh, it's happening now. We saw 49 knots. This place is just insanely picturesque and very, very calm. We have the choice of where to anchor and it's like, okay, so between the 10 waterfalls there, should we anchor? Or go around this little corner and see like awesome cliffs and, and like another few waterfalls. It's, it's beautiful around here, absolutely beautiful. The following day, still aching from our mammoth hike up the nearby Drangayoko Glacier, we decided to go on a much less active dinghy excursion. The fjord was rumoured to be a good place to spot seals, so we hopped in the dinghy and set out to explore the fjord and find some of these elusive seals. Self wasn't very good. We didn't get very, very close, but there you go, confirmed sighting. There are seals here. We we're starting to wonder. So no seals will come around the boat. We thought we would take ourselves on a little dinghy adventure to shore and see if we can spot any seals ourselves. His head, he's just popped up. He's just like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Marco, solo. Come and say hello. Uh, do you remember that discussion that we had about beautiful nature? <laughs> and then you speak. How do you beckon a seal? It's big. Do you think he answers to the same songs as dolphins? <laughs> They're so chill, they're just like, what are you doing over there? on the move again. Unfortunately, we only stayed here only uh, overnight, but it was such a lovely anchorage. Definitely, definitely want to come back here. We have to go though. Uh, there is, there's not bad weather coming, but it's just not really ideal weather coming. Plus we're also running out of water because we didn't manage to get any prior to leaving. And we're also gonna go and pick up some friends in a few days who are gonna come out sailing with us. So for many reasons, we are going to go back to Itzefjordo for a few days and uh, when we pick up our friends, we'll probably come back here because it's such a lovely place and we just discovered the best place to see the seals. For now, heading back to Isafjorda. The weather's not too bad. Um, I think we should be able to sail to get down there. It should be about a six hour sail or so, which is quite nice. Uh, all downwind too. That's lovely. Adam's absolutely thoroughly sick of going upwind. So a nice downwind sail should be pretty good. Hey buddy, you're a big one. Pretty awesome. They were extremely playful, quite large too. You can see them look up at you. They sort of swim along under the bow and then when you make enough racket, they sort of roll onto their side and look up at you with this big eye. And then they start putting on a little show for you until they get bored. That was, we're all about the wildlife today. We're having a great day for wildlife. Now we just need some whales. it off. 
time for some sailing. Lazy sailing today. We uh, we basically just rolled out ahead. So we're about 20, just shy of, let's call it 15, 15 miles from uh, it's a fjord. We've just got to cross the main fjord. We're coming out of this fjord, cross the main fjord, and then we're straight back in again. It's all downwind, so we just rolled out a head sail and uh, take a ride all the way back to it's a fjord for the next two hours, really. The tide's with us, the wind's with us, so it should be pretty smooth. We don't often just roll out a head sail because there was this one time when we were in Puerto Rico um, that our prop shaft fell off and we only had the head sail out. And suddenly when you lose a prop shaft and you can't really steer very well, uh, wait, what? tell me the story me. that I brought up, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were running down the coast. Puerto Rico in general is really windy in the middle of the day and it's calm in the morning and calm in the evening. So what you do is you kind of motor down the coast in the morning. This is when you go into windward, obviously. And, uh, and then you sort of tuck in and do what you're gonna do, have a lovely day in the sun. And then in the evenings, you can either stay there or move again. So we were on our way in the morning, very calm. And then we were sort of a little bit behind schedule. And so we were coming in in like mid morning as the wind was building. And as it was building, we got the opportunity to just kind of roll out a head sail, which we did. And when it was time to sort of pack it all up and motor into the harbor, we obviously discovered that the propeller shaft had let go and was stuck out the back of the boat. So now we're sort of in, 25 30 knots midday roaring breeze with a head sail out massive weather helm kind of knowing what what i know now about this boat and about how how to maneuver her and just sailing in general we've got a bit more experience this doesn't seem like such a big deal but at the time the weather helm was pretty much uncontrollable and we couldn't get her to come up into the wind to get the mainsail up enough so what i ended up having to do was to jibe my way upwind into the harbor or into the bay where we then were able to sort of sail into a spot um, using just the head sail and jibing because she wouldn't come through the eye of the wind in order to throw the anchor overboard, get rid of the sail and then let the wind push us so the an anchor grabbed and we were yeah. all okay. And then we put the shaft back to rights and everything was fine. So we've always been scarred from just doing a jib only, even though we see so many boats around the Caribbean just doing a jib only. But we're always like, oh, our boat should well, we'll be, be doing that. what if, it, well, what what if, if? Like, you lose your prop shaft? Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe we might have recovered finally, just a mere five years later. It, yeah. <laughs> our PTSD has finally subsided. <laughs> Yes! Orcas! Oh, 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 oh. Wow! Wow! Come on, come and say hello. Please come and say hello. That is a trifecta. That is a massive score. Orcas, I did not think we could. Oh, Adam just called me up from downstairs and just said, Kill her! Kill her! Well. Orca! Orca! Oh my god! So I just came running up here. He's hand steering, so he was like, Oh, I can't, I can't uh, get the camera out. So I took the camera out, tried to get the lens cap off and saw a huge fin, but I just think I'd caught the tip of it on the camera. Damn it. That was so, that was literally, what did Adam say before? He said, Now we just need some whales. We just need whales. <laughs> and there he is. Wow. That oh, is, man. wow, what an amazing sail back. This is so cool. This has just been Dolphins, amazing. Dolphins, seals <gasps> and orca all in the space of a couple yeah. of hours. In, in, 20 miles. We've not even done 20 miles. Just amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry we couldn't get it on camera. I'm so sorry. <laughs> With the bad weather setting in, we were awake and keeping a close eye on the boat. Sometime around 11 p.m., Kiara came up to investigate a bank she had. As it turns out, that bang was the sound of the dinghy being flipped like a pancake. As you can see, the outboard is completely upside down and submerged. I was relieved to see it still attached, but I was worried it would fall off at any moment. We needed to get it upright and off ASAP. Alright, go. I'm helping you too. Amongst all the chaos, I managed to grab a GoPro on a mouth grip. It's very rough footage, but it's all we had. Or, 
or the up yeah vertically. yeah yeah yep my plan was to use the windlass winch and the dinghy hoist setup we always use to flip the dinghy upright and get the outboard off i just had to hope that with the dinghy full of water the windlass would be up to the task Okay. Uh, can we just tie it onto the end of the green thing and pull it up with that? Just as we got the dinghy upright, another gust came down the fjord. Adam was stuck at the windlass and I was left holding the dinghy in place, hoping that the wind didn't catch it and shake the already submerged outboard loose. With 45 knot gusts racing down the fjord, we were being broadsided from all directions, which caused the boat to lurch in one direction and then the other, tearing the anchor free. At this stage, we were well and truly dragging anchor.
While the dinghy chaos was unfolding, the solar panels were being torn from the Bimini and needed to be rescued before they flew off. Cables, um, the crimping's gone. The, the battery crimping, the control lights. Oh my god. Totally ripped, torn. Oh <sighs> we need to get this off. Okay. Um, what do you need? Uh, cutters. I need to cut and disconnect what I can to salvage it. Right. Oh, so that weather that we came back to port for, it's uh, it's happening now. We uh, we saw 49 knots before we just got that dinghy in. I can smell the fuel and oil. to be upright. With no transportation to get us to shore, the next day we headed into the harbour. So, next day, and of course, you might be able to see behind me beautiful blue skies and I'd say about eight knots of wind. Literally, when we turned the camera off, it was about half an hour after that and the wind just died down to about 17 knots. Managed to get some sleep. We're absolutely gutted, to be honest. There's, like, what, what else can you say? It's a seriously, ugh, I don't even have words. So we took the outboard downstairs and we took it actually into the shower, completely, like, showered it down with fresh water. That's what you say you should do, is, like, submerge it in fresh water if it's been in salt water to try and displace any of the salt. Um, so that's the best equivalent that what we can do is just throw it in the shower and just shower it down for a few minutes. Um, we managed to get some salt water out, but Adam's gonna try and mess around with that today. And uh, obviously it's not starting, obviously. I'm annoyed because we actually didn't even use the outboard yesterday. We just put it down just for a bit of sunlight on the deck and because we knew we were gonna be here for a few days. I'm also annoyed because the forecast did not say it was going to be those kinds of winds like we came in here because it was going to be a bit of bad weather but like it was going to be gusting up to like 25 or something and we and we just didn't really want to be in a in a fjord kind of with unknown holding for that I did not expect 49 knot winds I did not expect that luckily the outboard um, fuel the fuel tank because we didn't use it yesterday it's still downstairs as are the oars as is the anchor for the um, dinghy so luckily like we just realized that this morning because we were honestly like wow we've, we've lost everything like even if we can get the outboard back where can we find um, some honda um, fittings for the petrol here in iceland like it just seemed really hard everything just seemed a little hard to get it to get it working again but i don't know we'll see three solar panels also came loose too but we managed to save them because they were plugged in. One plug actually tore out, but more casualties. How's the casualty? I managed to break the airlock or the hydro lock that it had, changed out the oil filter, stripped and reassembled and cleaned the carburetor, and I'm just changing the oil now. Um, I'll put a new oil filter in there, did I say that? So. It's turning, free turning. I've put some oil in the cylinder and put some cycles through it so it's smooth and clean now. Um, honestly, all the oil looked clean. It didn't look to be that milky consistency when water gets in oil. Um, and no water really came gushing out. So I'm hoping we caught it sort of just after it happened and got it out of the water before it really you know, turned into a disaster. So I'll put some oil in it, let it sit, and then I'll just have to try it, really. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Are you actually serious? It's a very good sign. That was first pull. <laughs> the little engine that could. We'll see if she comes up and idles properly and coughs and splutters. There she goes, there she goes, that's it, that's it. This is <laughs> like a miracle, <laughs> this is insane. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I was so so worried that we'd need to spit like it would just be broken and that that's five grand down the drain and need to buy a new outboard and just couldn't afford that. I think I think we might be saved. Maybe. Maybe. Who's the master of Who's the man? <laughs> oh my god! Adam, we are officially never ever taking our outboard to anyone else. You can do this. <laughs> You've created another job for yourself. I never ever thought that was going to come back to life. Ever, ever, ever in a million years. I'm obviously ridiculously happy, but more shocked than anything else. I cannot believe that works.